The following program is a presentation of Hall Sports Communications. Southeast Mortgage, the official home loan lender of the Georgia Bulldogs. <laughs> presents today's sports report on today's program we'll talk about university of georgia football and more and now from the studios of uga football news on facebook and instagram here's the host of today's sports report chris hall all right welcome to uh, today's sports report brought to you by uga football news on facebook and instagram i'm chris hall your host Matthew Hall is joining us as well, looking spiffy in his uh, Georgia Bulldog hat. And I can't tell you how pleased and honored we are to have one of the greats of the University of Georgia football history, DJ Shockley, joining us today on our program. Uh, DJ, uh, it it is such a great honor to have you on uh, with us. Uh, You have a great heritage with the University of Georgia. Played for Coach Mark Rick back in the day, 2002 to 2005. Went on to play for the Atlanta Falcons. Then you got into the broadcasting uh, business, and uh, you're (laughs) currently uh, working with uh, WAGA-TV, Fox 5, out of Atlanta and uh, doing some other things and broadcasting as well. DJ, welcome to our program today. We're honored to have you. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you guys having me. I know we've been trying to... Get connected here in the last few weeks, but I'm glad we finally found a time where we can get it done, and uh, I'm excited to be on. I appreciate you guys having me. Yeah, well, well, we're pleased to have you. Now, of course, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about University of Georgia football, but man, dude, uh, we, we, I, I've got to go to Houston with you. Uh, of course, you <laughs> covering the Braves for uh, Channel 5, uh, Fox 5 out of Atlanta, and you were there when uh, the Atlanta Braves uh, won the World Series just a couple of nights ago on the field covering for WAGA-TV. Man, I tell you, you know, I have been a Braves fan since they moved to Atlanta. I've got a little age on you, a little bit. And I I remember the day. I remember when they came into Atlanta. I was a Braves fan immediately. Did you know that Dizzy Dean once did uh, broadcasting for the Atlanta Atlanta Braves? (laughs) Dizzy Dean, the old guy. Oh, yes, wow. I know, right? Uh, yeah. Wow. For two or three seasons uh, back in the 60s, Dizzy Dean was one of the radio broadcasters. And I can remember that. That's Sweet. just telling you how old I am. <laughs> but I, I, before we get into uh, talking a little bit about UGA, how exciting was it for you to be there in Houston? I know you're a big Braves fan. How exciting it was. Uh, how exciting it was for you to be there in Houston as the Braves won their first World Series since 1995. Yeah, it was actually a dream. I, I tell you, I mean, I took this new job with Fox uh, this summer, and I didn't think three months from then I would be coming to World Series and seeing the Braves do something pretty special. So like, you, something like you just mentioned that hadn't happened in a very long time. So I was excited to be there. Obviously, we had great access to the players. I got a chance to talk to, you know, anybody you can think about. I mean, I, I, I was in a dugout just – Chopping it up with Ron Washington, you wow. know, a few games. Uh, obviously, talking to Jock, seeing the famous pearls. Uh, you know, you, you get a, you get great access when you go, and it, it was pretty fun to watch it. Uh, obviously, we would love to see it get done here in the ATL, but it was it didn't make it any less sweeter uh, watching the guys do it in Houston. Yeah, and uh, now I know they they're going to have the big parade coming up, uh, you, you know, on Friday. Uh, are you going to be in attendance to that? That should be a lot of fun. I mean, there's going to be so much pent-up passion for the Braves expressed yeah. uh, in that parade. That's going to be a lot of fun, isn't it? Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to make it down there just because uh, I, feel like, I feel like I've seen the Braves a lot in the last yeah. few weeks. So I think I, you know, uh, could, could probably uh, less afford to just see them and go wave. Uh, but I, I don't know, man. I, I got two younger kids, so I may take them out there. We'll see. But, uh the parade absolutely will be fun going through downtown and obviously going over Cobb County and then inside the stadium. It's going to be one of those to remember, I know for sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, so, uh, you know, we turn from the Braves to the uh, Georgia Bulldogs. Now the Bulldogs, number one in the country, the official SEC East champions. So we're headed to the SEC championship in Atlanta. Georgia just having a great season, a magical season. But we all keep reminding ourselves the season is not over. You you still got these games to play. Of course, last Saturday, the Bulldogs had a big win over their arch rival, the University of Florida, beating Florida 34 to 7 last Saturday afternoon. You were there, of course. Uh, And by the way, DJ, 
uh, is on the uh, he's the sideline reporter for the uh, Georgia Football Radio Network. Uh, yeah, I re- you know we all remember Larry Munch and what do you got, Lauren? You know with that thing, <laughs> and then, then you got Chuck Dowdle coming in for about uh-huh. eleven years in that role. Now DJ Shockley is the sideline uh, reporter uh, for the University of Georgia Football Radio Network. Man, are you having fun with that? Is, is that a trip or what? And is it is it <laughs> semi controlled chaos being in that pos- particular position? You know what's funny is that. If, you know, there was one position that, you know, I probably would leave ESPN for, it was probably this one here because of, actually, it's the alma mater. It's uh, mm-hmm. a team, a place, it's the people that I truly enjoy being around. And, you know, obviously, when you follow in the footsteps of old Lawrence Smith, you follow in the <laughs> footsteps of my man Chuck, yeah. uh, you follow to that role <laughs> to be the next guy in there, it's uh, it's pretty darn cool. And I yeah. get a chance to see this team up close and personal every single week. Uh, it's fun as well. And then having a relationship I have with Kirby since, you know, he was on the staff my last year in 2005. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's pretty cool. So, uh, you know, this has been a fun season so far. Um, and it's looking like it's headed towards what we just saw with the Braves. So we hope we only can hope and pray that continues. But uh, it's been That's fun right. so far. You know, uh, when the Braves entered into the uh, into the playoffs, in previous years, uh, I would say to myself, okay, we're in the playoffs. Oh, boy. You know, you, you just almost <laughs> expected the fact that uh, they'll go a little ways and then maybe not do as good as you want them to do. But yeah, this year, I had a different feeling about that because I could almost sense the it factor with the Atlanta Braves, almost like you had with the Nationals yeah. when they won the World Series uh, two or three years ago. And, you know, I as, as I look at this Georgia football team and I see them perform – and I see how well they play, and, and they just boom right out of the uh, shoot, uh, you know, take uh, go for it in a in a ball game. I kind of sense that same. It's hard to define it factor with the University of Georgia. Do, do you with this team? Do you kind of sense that there's something different and special about this team uh, for the University of Georgia? Uh, I mean, no doubt about it. I mean, I don't think. Uh, this team is, is like majorly more talented than a lot of other teams. I think this year, just being around this team and watching what Kirby does on a daily basis, what he does in game, what he does at a halftime, what the entire staff does with adjustments and the way they relay that message to their players, the players want to literally run through a wall for every single coach. So it's fun to see these guys in action and see them up close and see how they prepare because, yeah, they're talented. I mean, you know, it's four or five star guys all over the place. It's, you know, it's even walk-ons out there that's making plays too. So that's right. uh, I think it comes down to the fact that these coaches are getting the most out of all of these players and they're all buying in and they're playing together because there are a lot of guys who can say, hey, I'm the head hop off the dog. I'm the guy who's going to get all the uh, recommendations and all that kind of stuff. But they all have one ego and it's fun to see that and it's awesome to see them go out and play as a team as a unit week in and week out and stay focused week in and week out on that particular team because as we know you can play you know opponents that are less than you and we've seen right. georgia play down to that level and yeah. each week they have not done that they always play to what they call the standard and playing at a high level you know uh, that day we you see the bulldogs up close and personal i, I mean you're literally right there on the sideline uh, you, you're right there. And we see, you know, uh, guys like us, we, we see uh, the uh, Georgia defense from much further away on the television or in the stands or something like that. But that Georgia defense, uh, yeah. you know, it is it is a beast. Are they uh, – do you think that's the number one defense in the country? And do you think it's a generational type defense? Is this a once-in-a-generation type defense? Well, I'll say this. They're suffocating, no doubt. I mean – and what makes them, I think, the best defense in the country is their depth. Everybody knows mm-hmm. about Jordan Davis. Everybody knows about Devontae Wyatt. And everybody knows about Nicole Dean. But then there's, you know, six, seven more guys that come rolling in there when those guys get tired. Or there's, you know, six, seven more guys that roll in when you need a pass rush or you need some guys in coverage. This is a defense that I think plays so well together and absolutely is a generational type of defense because of, the versatility they have. They have so many guys who can do a lot of different things. I mean, just last week, 
you you expect Nicobe Dean to only stay inside the box, but last mm. week he goes outside, covers a guy, takes the interception to the house. That's right. That just doesn't happen all the time if this guy's yeah. not versatile enough to go outside and play uh, running back to the slot or run or, or near the sideline. It's just fun to watch him, and I do believe they're number one defense in the country. And the numbers sometimes lie to you, but these numbers are telling the truth that hey, only giving up six points a game is pretty amazing. That's pretty good, and having yeah. those shutouts. And man, we were pulling for that shutout last Friday or last Saturday, rather, uh, against Florida. Matthew, you want to jump in with a question for DJ? Yeah, uh, of course. I want to first of all, you know, and I hadn't, I hadn't said much, but I want to jump in and make sure I, uh, I tell you congratulations on on getting that role as well. I know it's a big honor to you, and uh, you know, to be able to, to step into that role. So congr- I want to make sure I say congratulations to you on that and your time. This Appreciate morning. that. Um, Appreciate I do want to, I, uh, jumping on the defensive question, though, just, just as, I mean, because I know at least I'm, I mean, I'm, I've watched Georgia for as long as I can remember. And I know it, uh, at least for me, my, uh, in my lifetime, um, I'm, you know, 41. Um, I, this is the best defense I've ever seen Georgia have. I mean, do you think, do you think, and I know you, you know, it's different for you as a player slash uh, alumni, um, you know, now into, into the role that you're in. But do you think it's the best Georgia defense that you that you've seen at least uh, outside of your playing time of uh, being on the field? Yeah, you know what, I, I just watch them from you know the, the standpoint of steam and the kind of stuff they do, and I always try to compare like, okay, if I'm playing against this defense, you know, where would I want to attack? And to be honest, it's hard to find a weakness in this defense. It's hard to say, okay, you want to get the big guys going east and west. Well, you got Jordan Davis and Devontae Wyatt, all 300-plus running sideline to sideline, running guys down. Um, you talk about can you hit them, you know, face first and go right, go vertically, and uh, not many teams have been successful doing that either. Mm-hmm. Do you have time to throw the football at times? And sometimes they just bring four or five guys, and there's not time to do that either. Uh, right. Play action down the field. I mean, it's, it's so many different things I've thought about. How can I try to attack them? And it's tough to find those spots. So, yeah, it's it would be an absolute task to go against this defense. Uh, of course, the competitor in me would love to go against uh, Georgia's defense if I was playing, yeah. but uh, I'm glad I don't have to. Uh, I'm that. sure <laughs> once, a lot of, once, a lot of teams, once a lot of teams finish playing Georgia, they're like, man, I'm glad we're done with them because they don't give up much and they do not like teams to score. I tell you that. They yeah. are furious if a team yeah, they anywhere are. in the end zone. Uh, to be honest, they don't want them to get past the fifty yard line. Just yeah, and I mean, you know, the that, locker room. That's what they. That's what they're about. Right now, I mean, it, you know, and I even had that conversation with somebody else here recently about the the defense. You know, and, and what's the difference between this year's defense and the defenses that we've had in the past? And here's the one thing I've noticed: they take it personally if you score. I mean, you know, I don't think I've seen that in quite a how while. How dare you? <laughs> you know, I mean, it's like yeah, uh, it's yeah. almost it's almost a slap in the face, you know, to yeah. this defense. Yeah, it's and, and, it's, uh, <laughs> it's they get angry. Yeah, they get angry. I mean, if they get anywhere near, they score. You can see they are furious. No matter if it's thirty-eight to seven, they are furious about it. Right. You know, how, how impressive is is Jordan Davis? I you know, and now he's getting Heisman hype, well deserved. But, but you know, he's just one of the pieces in that Georgia defense. But, man, dude, I you know, I watched him run down that quarterback uh, for uh, – I forget which team it was. He ran down the quarterback, and the quarterback yeah. was yeah, a yeah, young, yeah. slender yeah. guy. I mean, how impressive is he? Have you ever seen a player that big, that fast, to like Jordan Davis? Yeah, I remember that's that UAB game, the quarterback running out the yeah. to the right side, and he goes right. running down. But – uh I mean, no, dudes, 350 pounds should not move like that. That's just ridiculous <laughs> for a dude that big to move. And every game I'm watching him or every game I see him, I'm like, this dude is humongous. And I'm, mm-hmm. you know, I done seen some some pretty big dudes in my career, in my time. But I'm yeah. like, this dude here is amazing. And you watch him play in game, the kind of stuff that he can do uh, makes him special. He just, he's a real cerebral player, too, from that defensive tackle spot. And there's times where he just ragged. Ragtails a guy, throws him, and go makes the tackle, or you know gets upfield. He, he can pretty much dominate whenever he wants to, and uh, he understands he is a unique talent. Hey, yeah, and you know he's got a praying mama too. Uh, you yeah. know, I saw the uh, no picture where he prays with his yeah. mom before every game. That's very special. Well, as special as the defense is for the University of Georgia, the offense is not too shabby either. Uh, the offense has been clicking, uh, been operating. 
been doing very well. Stetson Bennett had a uh, kind of a decent game against Florida and, you know, a couple of hiccups here and there. Zemir White had a uh, standout game against Florida. So the offense is not not too shabby as well. But, you know, for the for the fan who sits up in the stands like I do and, and you know, watch the games on television, you, you still have a kind of question in your mind. Is is this offense now? We, we've got the championship defense. But is the offense going to be able to go up against like an improving Alabama football team? It's it's amazing to say that they're improving, but they are since that uh, mm-hmm. loss they took uh, to uh, Texas A&M. Uh, and, and, you know, uh, offensively, Georgia is there. And I guess, you know, the elephant in the room, and I, I saw a lot of uh, stories about it this week, is Stetson Bennett the quarterback to take Georgia to the championship? Or do we need to go ahead and get JT Daniels in there? You know, you see these guys up close and personal. I love Stetson Bennett. I yeah. love what he does. I love his heart. I love what he's done so far. Uh, JT Daniels is a special talent as well. Ugh, how, how's Coach How's Coach Smart going to handle this? And as we go forward, knowing where we want to go, what do you think uh, about the quarterback situation in Georgia? Well, that's the, that's the, that's the number one question. I think that's a, a tough question, too. And yeah. uh, I guess that's why... You know, we pay we pay Kirby Smart all this money to make these type of decisions. <laughs> That's right. Uh, but you know what? It's it's been one of those situations where obviously everybody's excited to see what JT could do, and obviously when he got here, there was a lot of talk about him and his his health uh, physically, and you know he finally got a chance to play. And this year he's going through the lat issue, uh, but I thought Stetson has stepped in and played pretty darn good football. Um, yeah. Obviously, as the year started, he came in the game, everybody looked at him as like a game manager guy, a guy who wouldn't lose the game for you, but wouldn't really win it, wouldn't make a lot of plays down the field. And he's shown the ability to, be able to do that. Well, I think he has separated himself right now from JT. And I think what Kirby really likes about him is his ability to get outside the pocket and move. Yeah. We've seen him in, you know, last four or five games, mm-hmm. make a lot of plays with his legs. And that's crucial too that Hey, you're going to be playing against some of these guys that are going to beat your offensive lineman. Can you still create and make a play? And I think Stetson has done that. And then I think it's something that Kirby likes. I mean, I know he's been looking for a mobile guy for a while. And Stetson has enough mobility to make a defense pay. Um, now, going forward, I think that big question is, yeah, do we have enough offense to go against a team like Alabama who you know is going to score some points? Uh, and I think Georgia's offense is capable. I think they've shown the ability to be able to do that. Uh, if Stetson plays within himself now and doesn't try to force the issue like he did a couple times last week versus Florida, he can absolutely make some hay against a team like Alabama. You got a really tough run game. You got three, four guys come out of there that are tough physical runners. Uh, we've seen Zeus finish off the last couple of ball games with his runs. And then his offensive line has been together for a little bit, so they're starting to gel and play consistent football. So this is an offense that I, I think can absolutely match him, but obviously Stetson has to be – uh, in the right frame of mind and, you know, really putting up some big-time plays in a ball game against a team like Alabama. Yeah, we love Stetson. Now, this coming Saturday, Georgia will be playing Missouri. Uh, it'll be a uh, 12 o'clock game on ESPN. Missouri coming in 4-4 four and four on the year, uh, kind of in a rebuilding uh, mode. Georgia, obviously, 8-0, and o, number one in the country. Uh, so as you, as you look forward to, you know, for me, as I look forward over the Georgia schedule, I see one, you know, you got to play every one of these games and you never know what's going to happen on a Saturday. But I, I see t- Tennessee maybe being a, a, a potentially tough game, especially because you're going to Tennessee and they're kind of coming off a high playing pretty good football. But as as you look forward to this Missouri game, uh, they're coming into Athens. They're 39 point underdogs. I mean, I, wow. 39 point underdogs uh, to the uh, Georgia Bulldogs. What do you anticipate for uh, uh, this uh, final SEC game, Holmes game, uh, for the University of Georgia? Yeah, I, I think it's going to be one of those games. That I think Georgia comes out and put their foot on the neck, and that's kind of what you know they have done all year long. Uh, you mm-hmm. think about when you went to Vanderbilt and. There weren't many fans. It was kind of cold. It was a little rainy. And Georgia still played to the standard 
and you look up and it's 28 nothing with six minutes to go in the first quarter. And that's what you expect from this kind of team to go out and handle their business. And, mm-hmm. You know, just hearing them talk inside the locker room, the number one thing they talk about is playing to the standard of who we are and not who they are. And you don't ever want to play down to a team regardless of who's out there. We're not playing Missouri, not playing Florida. We're playing the Georgia Bulldogs. You know, we do what we're supposed to do. The other team really won't matter. So they continue to go out and have that kind of mindset going in. Uh, But this is a Missouri team that focuses a lot on throwing the football. Uh, But on the defensive side, they have struggled. They're last in the SEC, giving up almost 283 yards a game rushing. So uh, I think there will be some hay to be made uh, in this ball game. Uh, and then, you know, Missouri is, you know, really, there's one guy you got to worry about is Tyler Beatty in that ball game because he's a guy who wants to get after. They give him tons of touches. I think he's got like 150 attempts right now. Next closest Man. is like 30 something. So he is <laughs> their main go to getter on, on the offensive side of the ball. Yeah, it, it, it be interesting game. And of course, uh, Georgia, with that uh, much of a spread, you do anticipate. Uh, Georgia winning the game. One of the special things that's going to happen this coming Saturday is at halftime, the University of Georgia will be honoring Coach Mark Rick in a very special way. Now, you were recruited by Coach Rick. In fact, I guess you were considered to be his first, I guess, a recruit at the University of Georgia. We love Coach Rick. We had the yeah. opportunity to uh, talk with him and some uh, to spend some time with him. We've been praying for Coach Rick, yeah. obviously, with his health issues and health uh, situation going on. But, uh, you know, uh, Coach Rick, uh, we love uh, Coach uh, Smart. He's a great guy. We, we love our coaches. But yeah. I know probably in your heart there's a very special place in your heart for Coach Mark Rick. Uh, talk a little bit about that and your relationship with Coach. Yeah, to be, you know, considered, uh, you know, his very first recruit to the University of Georgia means a lot. There's a lot of pride in that uh, because of who he is and, you know, what he did before he even got to the University of Georgia already, you know, said a lot about his, you know, career, said a lot about his pedigree. And then once he got to the University of Georgia, obviously one of the more beloved coaches that, you know, you know, came through the university because of what he stood for and the kind of demeanor that he had, he had all the time. And uh, he's always been special to me. He's always been a guy that I can always lean on from my days of playing to even after, you know, I stopped playing for him. Uh, there was always that relationship that we had to be able to honor him uh, this weekend, I'm so excited about it. Uh, there are going to be a bunch of guys back who asked, who played for Coach Rick, uh, but he's absolutely deserving of this honor. And I'm so proud that he's getting recognized in this way uh, because this guy did so much for guys, not just on the field, but he made a lot of guys that came through the University of Georgia better men, better husbands, better brothers, and just men of God. So he is that yeah. kind of guy that, you know, no matter what time it is or what's going on, I know I can reach out to him. Uh, for anything and he's always been there for me so uh i'm super proud super pumped to see him this weekend and uh i know dog nation is going to be really excited when they get the chance to see him and celebrate him and uh, a lot of guys gonna get to hug that guy and tell him they love him yeah that's going to be great Uh, of course you're on the sidelines now with the georgia football radio network that was a funny story uh, the, of something that's happened on the sidelines or something that nobody knows about. I know you got some stories. Uh, you know, you fell over something. Somebody fell over you. Uh, you know, uh, with, uh, with, tell us a little something interesting uh, that uh, may have happened on the sidelines that uh, that you'd love to uh, uh, share with us. Uh, you know what? I think just last week something crazy <laughs> happened um, at the Florida game. Of course, something crazy would happen down there. I mean, I. I think uh, it's the middle of the game, and uh, obviously George is playing pretty well. And this one guy, he was just—he he wanted to get down the field for some reason, and this guy jumps out of the stand right into the back of uh, George's <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, bench and tries to go for the savage pads. And I mean, he went all for it, and you know, obviously <laughs> he got tapped to the ground like you know it was Nicole Dean looking for some lunch uh, with, a, with a gator. So. Uh, he absolutely was having a good time. Uh, I think he had maybe six or seven, eight adult drinks, so he felt good <laughs> at the moment. And uh, yeah. I guess that would be his, his claim to fame. He had a chance to touch the, the vaunted Savage pads, and then uh, obviously he had to pay the consequences for it later. Yeah. <laughs> good deal. All right. Well, we'll take a break. We'll be back in just a moment on our program. Today's sports report will be right back after this message from Southeast Mortgage, the official home loan lender of the Georgia Bulldogs. 
This is head coach Kirby Smart. It's my job to coach the fundamentals of football and prepare my guys for the future. Well, my friends at Southeast Mortgage are preparing you for your future by becoming a homeowner. Every Bulldog deserves a home. If you're in the market to purchase or refinance, I trust Southeast Mortgage to provide the best experience and get it done. Visit southeastmortgage.com slash UGA to get pre-approved for your home loan today. Southeast Mortgage the official home loan lender of the Georgia Bulldogs. Southeast Mortgage of Georgia Incorporated, NMLS, number 103956, Georgia Residential Mortgage License, number 6578. The only thing better than winning between the hedges on Saturday is coming home to this on Sunday. On the football field, I'm a coach. At home, I'm a dad. The field is where legends are made, where boys become men, dreams become reality, and teammates become family. Family is the most important thing. It's everything we have. And home is where a family's memories are made. So when the time comes to finance your home, make the smart choice and get your home loan with Southeast Mortgage. Thank you for joining us and welcome back to today's sports report. All right, we're back with DJ Shockley. D- uh, DJ, one of the things we want to run through real quickly for you, and I, I know you know we uh, don't want to take too much more of your time, but we do want to look forward to the schedule, the SEC schedule. One of the things we do is look forward to what's happening in SEC action uh, for this coming Saturday. Some interesting games uh, going on in the SEC. The East has been decided, but the West is still uh, kind of up there. You got Alabama with that Auburn game coming up. Yeah, yeah, just don't know. Uh, and But uh, some interesting games. Liberty will be traveling to Ole Miss. And uh, Liberty, you know, a decent program. Uh, may get into the, uh, you know, one of the uh, upper echelon uh, conferences. I, I saw some uh, some things uh, about that uh, this week. You have Liberty going to Ole Miss. Ole Miss coming off of a loss last week to Auburn, 31-20. to, to 20. Obviously, expect Ole Miss to bounce back and win this game. Could be interesting. What do you think? Yeah, I think the other big caveat I forget about is uh, oh, Hugh Freeze was at Liberty. You know, was that Ole Miss getting a chance to go back there? That'll be fun. Uh, Lane Kiffin, as we know, um, is never one to hold his tongue, so you you always expect a good sound bite from him. Yeah, that's right. it's an Ole Miss <laughs> team that's always been uh, you know fun to watch. They've been high flying. Uh, I expect Ole Miss to handle their business and, and go and yeah. take down Liberty. But Liberty is a team that's, you know, kind of under radar there. You know, they got some players. They got some key guys that are, you know, a lot of people watching around the country. Uh, so it's going to be an interesting matchup. But uh, I expect Ole Miss to be able to buy the end of the game be able to wear down on, on Liberty. Speaking of uh, Hugh Freeze, his name has kind of been mentioned with the LSU coaching vacancy that will come up at the end of the year. Um, what do you think about that? That might be an interesting possibility. Yeah, I, mean, I think any coach that uh, coaches in the SEC and, and leaves wants to get back to the SEC because it's just the, the premier conference. Uh, you get the premier players, and uh, obviously he's done good for himself and, you know, trying to rebuild uh, that, that career back to where it was. And now I think he would love to be at a place like LSU and uh, be back into the, the primetime conference and at a place like LSU. Yeah. Uh, Matthew, you think uh, Liberty is going to make any hay against Ole Miss? Well, in the words of Lane Kiffin with his sound bites, uh, I'm going I'm to throw it out there. Matt Corral. Matt Corral. Uh, that guy's just a gunslinger. I mean, he's been. If he's healthy enough, enough to play. Yeah, you know, if he's, he's healthy enough up. to play, that is. I mean, uh, you know, if he is in the game, I mean, he's going to throw the ball a lot. We know that. Um, so I don't think that. You know, no, I don't think Liberty can withstand that passing attack. Another interesting game coming up this Saturday. This will be the 3.30 game on CBS. Auburn traveling to Texas A&M. Now, Auburn's playing pretty good football uh, since, uh, you know, Georgia took them out. Texas A&M trying to bounce back and get, uh, you know, back to uh, where they were projected to be for this year. It's going to be a very interesting game. Auburn at Texas A&M. For me, that's a toss-up. I, I don't, I don't know which one's going to win uh, this one. Uh, <laughs> you might give the edge to Texas A&M for being home, but Bo Nix yeah. has been playing very well, and Auburn's been playing well, very well. Brian Harson doing a great job at Auburn. What do you think about that game, PJ? Yeah, that's a that's a fun game, man. I, like you said, that's a toss-up. One of those kind of games where you're like, man, I wouldn't be surprised if either one of those teams wins that ball game. And like, it's just tough to go is play at the 12th man out there. Yeah. And it takes that in. They get right. They get loud. They get rocking. But I'm loving Bo Nix. Um, and I, I kind of got a weak spot for Auburn, except for when they play Georgia, because my man, Mike Bobo, is the OC. Yep, that's uh, right. So I want to see him do well. I want to see right. his, 
you know, his guys do do a good time. So uh, I'm hoping Auburn goes down there and gets him a win in, in, in Aggie Land. Yeah. Uh, what about it, Matthew? What do you think? Yeah, I think Auburn? it's a toss up. I think it's a toss up game here too. I mean, I like I've liked Bo Nix. You know, I mean, I can think back even on our program where we talked about him at the beginning of the year with his experience. I mean, I like Bo Nix. I think Bo Nix just had a problem with not having the right people around him and. and uh, in terms of wide receivers and maybe, uh, you know, maybe not the best, just overall best concept coaching. Um, so I think it's a toss-up game, but I'm, I mean, actually, I will give A&M the edge here. I mean, they've been playing good football, and they are at home. It's tough to win at home against A&M. And uh, if Auburn wins this game, that's really going to set up that Alabama game uh, big time. Mississippi State traveling to Fayetteville to take on Arkansas. Mississippi State. Uh, winning last week, a big game against Kentucky, put Georgia in the SEC championship game as the SEC East champions. So you got Mississippi State uh, traveling to Arkansas. Arkansas's fallen on, you know, kind of tough times. Uh, it, it, you might give the edge to Mississippi State, but it may be time for Arkansas to get riled back up again and maybe get a big victory at home. Uh, what do you think about that one, DJ? Yeah, Mississippi State and Arkansas. Arkansas, we saw them look close, a tough physical team, but they struggled. I think since, you know, the loss to Georgia kind of broke them a little bit, yeah. um, especially when they were 4 0 feeling real well. And Mississippi State, that they were last week versus Kentucky, which I think a lot of people expected Kentucky to get that win because they were fighting uh, for the East still. Uh, but, you know, Mississippi State has started to turn the corner a little bit. And that's another team that has really good offense. And uh, that young quarterback is playing well for them. So, uh, I think Mississippi State may be just too much for Arkansas in the game. Yeah. yeah, interesting, Matthew. What do you think? Yeah, I think I think DJ spot on there. I mean, uh, you know, I, I like Arkansas. I think Pittman's done a great job of turning that program around and, and moving it in the right direction. But uh, with Mississippi State playing the way they've been playing and, and the momentum that they have, uh, you know, beat Kentucky last week. I mean, they're riding high. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give the edge to Mississippi, Mississippi State here this week. All right, you got LSU traveling to uh, Alabama. Uh, this will be the 7, p, uh, 7 p.m. game on ESPN. So, LSU, we all know what's happening uh, with, uh, with uh, down in Baton Rouge with LSU. Alabama, boy, they're clicking. Uh, they're, they're, you know, it, a lot of things are coming together for Alabama. And uh, offensively, they're getting stronger, it looks like. Bryce Young doing a great job for Alabama. You know, this shouldn't be much of a contest. Um, Alabama probably will relish the opportunity to lay it on LSU. Uh, so I don't see much of a contest with this one. Uh, what do you think? Uh, yeah, I'm in the same boat. I mean, Alabama's starting to get their stride. And obviously the continuity there on offense and Bryce Young has been, you know, pretty stellar all year long. And LSU's got their struggles all across the board uh, from the coaching staff all the way down. So uh, I, don't, I don't expect Alabama to struggle, but... Uh, it should be a good ball game. LSU will be definitely come ready to play, but uh, Bama, uh, absolutely too much. Yeah. Uh, Matthew, uh, yeah, you're on the same Bama, page there? Yeah, Bama, you know, I mean, in, in the position they're in, I mean, playing, playing, you know, good ball. I mean, they, and really the loss they have, I mean, you could throw a quarter up and say, hey, you know, they could have won that game easily. So, I mean, I do think LSU is going to come in with the mindset of, of playing a tough game. And I think that maybe, you know, kind of what you saw in Georgia versus Florida, first game, keep it close, uh, first quarter, keep it close. And then, you know, uh, I think the other team would just pull away. Bama would just pull away. And uh, so I, I'm definitely going with Bama here. 7 p.m. of this coming uh, Saturday on ESPN2. Tennessee at Kentucky. Tennessee traveling uh, to Kentucky. Kentucky, of course, losing last week to uh, Mississippi State. Mm. Tennessee, a very improving team. Uh, Josh Heupel doing a good job uh, for the Volunteers. Uh, be a, you know, this will be a pretty decent ball game. It should be a pretty fun ball game. Uh, this will be a setup for Georgia traveling uh, to Tennessee. Uh, no implications for the SEC East, other than you know where these teams are going to wind up in the final standing. Mm -hmm. Should be a lot of fun. Uh, that should be a fun game. Uh, you have would have to favor Kentucky, but. You know, Tennessee may give them a game. What do you think, DJ? Yeah, Tennessee's beaten a couple teams this year. I don't think a lot of people expected them to win and play in the, the style they play. Kentucky, yeah. I thought they would run the schedule after, you know, obviously losing to Georgia and, you know, have a chance to get back in it. But uh, Kentucky, you know, has kind of taken a couple steps back the last couple of weeks, especially after they lost last week. And it's been surprising that Heifel's been able to get these guys to play the way they plan in year one. So, 
Um, the way Kentucky played last week compared to where Tennessee is improving, um, I'm kind of leaning towards Tennessee now when I thought Kentucky would be a team that obviously would be able to run through them. But uh, we'll see. Uh, I don't think I'll be surprised one way or another uh, which team wins. All right, Matthew, what do you think? Tennessee or Kentucky? Yeah, I mean, I, I think Heifel's got Tennessee rolling. Um, I am going to give Kentucky, you know, the benefit of the doubt here playing at home, especially coming off the wall. So I think it's going to be a great game, though. Uh, um, really good game between these two teams. And uh, But I'm going to – I'm going to go with Kentucky in this one. All right, uh, one final game uh, for Saturday in the SEC. Seven thirty, excuse me, seven thirty on the SEC network. You have Florida traveling uh, to South Carolina. Uh, Florida, of course, um, mm. uh, losing to Georgia last week, thirty-four to uh, seven. South Carolina getting the week off. Uh, you got to think Florida is going to win this game, but who knows? Now South Carolina. They may rise up a little bit here and say, <laughs> you know, this may be a game that can uh, we can build on. What do you, what do you, what do you think, uh, DJ? Uh, South uh, Florida or South Carolina? I'm gonna ride with the Gators on this one. As much as I hate to always say I'll ride with yeah. the Gators, uh, I think Florida is just too much for South Carolina. South Carolina's got a lot to rebuild. I mean. I think it was last week or two weeks ago, they were in a dog part of the life with Bandy, who, you know, yeah. been struggling all year. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'm going to go with uh, Florida on this one. All right, Matthew, what do you think? Yeah, yeah, definitely Florida here. I mean, uh, you know, uh, of course, they're going to be uh, seething with uh, disappointment and anger from the, you know, from losing to Georgia the way they lost and, and things of that nature as well. So I think they, they, they come in and they handle business in this game. Well, that's going to wrap up our program yeah. for today. We have been so pleased to have DJ Shockley with us. Great Georgia player, uh, great broadcasting career, family man, great guy. And boom, uh, that, that's yeah. what we get on the sideline now, right? <laughs> uh, when with you, you're on the sideline. There you go. Boom. Uh, DJ, yeah. thank you for being with us today. Yes. Uh, we appreciate your time. We know how busy you are. And go dogs. Uh, and, and thank you for being with us. Go dogs. Yeah, thank you so much. Go dogs. Uh, I appreciate you guys having me. Uh, this was fun, man. Uh, wish you guys all continued success. And uh, as always, go dogs. All Thank right. You. Thank go you, man. Dogs. Very right. much. <laughs> so, DJ Shockley uh, with us today on our program. Uh, well, Matthew, uh, great program today. Yeah, uh, that's going to wrap it up for us. Uh, we appreciate uh, DJ uh, again uh, taking some time. Uh, he's kind of a busy fella. He's got a yep. lot of uh, irons in the fire. That's right. That's and right. Uh, he took time uh, to be with us today. Yeah. So, Matthew, we're going to wrap it up. Uh, any yeah. final words from you? Yeah, yeah. I want to, uh, today, I just want to make sure I mention uh, again, you know, I always want to be um, thankful and grateful to Southeast Moors, you know, our sponsor for uh, today's sports support. want to give a big shout out to them, um, Molly Morris, uh, you know, Mr. Graham, you know, all you guys. Hope you all are doing well. Appreciate the uh, partnership opportunity this season. It's been fun. Um, I want to also just, uh, you know just uh, be mindful that hey you know just like we talked about earlier you can lose on any given saturday no matter what team you are so it doesn't matter if you're number one i mean at the end of the day i think the mindset that georgia's got to have uh final thoughts here going you know uh, leaving the show here today i think georgia's got to have the mindset of um you know we're not eight and over it's zero and zero it's week one um and you can lose to anybody on any given saturday no matter who they are and uh, no matter how much better of a team you are talent-wise. So I think Georgia has to have that mindset moving forward, and I think if they do, that's where you're going to see the most success with, with the dogs on the field, um, you know, as we continue to try to take take this season all the way. Um, and then, of course, you know, you got to give the, the, last, the last thing, as always, a big go dogs. Go dogs. Go dogs. Thank go dogs. you guys for being with us. Join us again next time. UGA Football News would like to thank Southeast Mortgage, the official home loan lender of the Georgia Bulldogs, for sponsoring our program today. When the time comes to finance or refinance your home, make the smart choice and get your home loan from Southeast Mortgage. Your friends at Southeast Mortgage are ready to help you. Visit southeastmortgage.com slash UGA today for more information. This and previous editions of today's sports report can be found at 
UGA Football News on Facebook and Instagram, on many leading podcast apps, and at todayssportsreport.com. Be sure to join us for our next program as we keep you up to date with University of Georgia football and more. Until then, be safe and go dogs. Oh.